All right, we back. We got that boy Bill Feezy in the building. What up, though? What up, though? I'm going to do it like, uh, I'm going to do it like, like Shannon Sharp do on his intros, if I can find it. Let me see. Entrepreneur, public speaker, father, content creator, social media influencer, make money, not excuses, advocate, songwriter. All right. Anything else I forgot? <laughs> uh, it's something out there, probably. I don't know. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I really want to say I appreciate you coming, coming by. You know what I mean? Uh, blessing the channel. For sure. Uh, congratulations on the hundred K followers. I know you like at hundred nine, hundred eight nine now. Um, but you know, I want to say congratulations because. I don't know if it if it looked easy, but us as content creators know how hard, you know what I mean? That shit ain't no joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, nah, it ain't. So um so how that feel anyway? Before we go in for how that feel to be like uh oh, to, to be so popular. It's always been like that? You always been popular? Um I was popular younger, like in high school for you know, the wrong things. I ain't just never been as popular as now, but you know what I'm saying? Like the things I was known for in high school, you know, it was bad stuff then when I was locked up. So I could kind of say, yeah, no, maybe, yeah, no. Okay. Okay. Um, does the popularity come with any like certain perks? You know what I mean? Girls, uh, you know what I mean? Any, you know, any, does the, the booty rate go up? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it definitely go with some perks, you know, I ignore a lot of it, though, you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. I try not to feed into too much of it, because, you know, that's when issues come, you know what I'm saying? You start having a lot of issues dealing yeah. with the women and stuff, but it definitely come with some perks. I done been in a few restaurants, and they noticed me and gave me the meal for free. Oh, damn, for real? Yeah, I done been out to a lounge, gave me a meal for free. I think the best perk it probably came with is uh when I moved in my new spot, I was furniture shopping. And the owner of the furniture store, his son seen me and went crazy. And his daddy was like half off on whatever you want. <laughs> and I got all my that's what I'm trying to get to. I got all my furniture half off. <laughs> man, that's what I'm trying to get to, man. Yeah. Market, just you know, just just for somebody to do that, like you know, for somebody, they they son to see you and he go crazy because he know who you is, and then because you got you know you got to imagine for that dad to be like, damn, this boy don't do backflip when I come home. He know who I am, but he seen this guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, his pops was telling me. He was telling me um. That his son, like his grades been getting better in school. He started like staying out of trouble more. Really? Since he been watching me. So he was like, bro, I appreciate what you're doing. I told him how long I did. And he was like, one time special for you. Half off or whatever. So I got everything. Man. Couch, bed, washer, dryer, flat screen, well, everything. I, got, well, I, I probably got it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know, I'm a, I ain't a Feezy fan. Like, subscribe. I'm a Feezy fan, but I ain't the, one of the members. Right. Um, so, you know, I watch. I know, like, most of the stuff. Uh, so, I know you're from Detroit. Yeah. Uh, how long you been in Georgia? Um, Probably since I was about, what, 11, 12, maybe. Yeah, probably about 11. 11. So, you've been here probably, uh, probably more than 20 years. Yeah. So, with, well, about, about 19, 20 right there. Okay. Are you still relatively young? Yeah, I'm 30. I just turned 30. Why you 30? Yeah. Man, you, you blessed. <laughs> now, for real, to, to be able to go through that and then still have youth and, you know what I mean, you can still, I'm telling you, blessed. You, because, and I say that because, see, I'm, I'm one of the guys, like, I, like, I got a lot of respect for, for, for smart stuff, smart people. Um, and if I can see that, you know, cause I, I look and be like, damn. If I were thinking like that at 30, I'm 40, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and then I've been, I got out at 23 from doing nine years. Bullshit. I ain't get my head on track to maybe I was 36 or 37. No, that, cause I'm 40 now. So maybe about 35. 
You see what I'm saying? But yeah. had I been focused, like the way you, how, how long you been out? How, how long you been out? Two years. Good God. By two years, I was still bullshitting. I was still going to jail. <laughs> I was still, I'm talking about, I was still catching active <coughs> felonies. Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really want to say, um, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a lot of respect. I appreciate you for coming through. It's definitely a lot of respect, man. Um, you one of the guys. I, you you might be the reason I started my channel. For real? Yeah, yeah. It'd it be like um, it'd be a little jealousy. I know I know people scared of that word, but it, it's not a bad jealousy because, like I said, if I can look and be like, "Damn, bro, started. He did nine years. I did nine years. Had I been thinking like him, I might be further than him right now." But you see what I'm saying? So it's a and then it's a, a competition. Like if he can do it, I can do it. But definitely a fan. You know, it's like not like a a bad competition. It's just a, I wanna do that. I wouldn't mind. You know what I mean? So, bro, you you a real example. We appreciate it. And we need it. Yeah. We need it. We need it. Oh, uh, so so why why did you move to Georgia? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I was young, man. I just know one day. Shit, it was a big ass U Haul outside the house. And my mama said, We gone. I know we was going to um we had been to Alabama and Georgia a lot. So maybe my mama was debating on Alabama or Georgia and she just picked Georgia. But I was too young to make a decision on if I wanna go or not. So I just got in the car and went. Just went with the what's going on? Yeah, it wasn't nothing I could do about it. Okay. What what was your like? Did you you had a, a real strong family tie like with mom and dad? Um, pops was locked up. When we moved, he actually had just got out that week, so we wasn't really that tight and cool then, cause I ain't really known for real. You left Detroit the week he got out. Yeah. <laughs> were were y'all? Were you? Were your mom trying to get away from him? Oh no! To be honest, really? I was young, bro. I was ten, eleven years. Old. I don't really know what the reason is. In, in your eyes, like. Cause I mean, you know, is your mom is it is it, is it like is he a bad guy? Is he a like your overall picture? He a um not in my eyes, really not in my. But see, you know, <clears throat> see the thing with that is this, bro. I can only see him in one way as pops. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, whatever you know, however my mama see him, I don't see that part. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really know what she thinks. She don't really talk about it. So okay, okay. Um, did your, your dad know about your activities? He know, like, he know you was robbing? I don't think he knew, uh, until, you know, I got locked up. We ain't never even talk about it, though. Like, I tried to tell him something before, and he cut me off. He like, hey, I don't, you ain't got to tell me nothing. My really? uncle, too, rest in peace, my uncle Irvin. I was trying to tell him something before. <laughs> and he said the same thing. He was like, hey, man, don't tell me nothing. I don't want to know about nothing. I'm like, Dang. That, you think that's like in a way of like um like saying I don't want to know like for incrimination purposes or just like okay you done chose your path it's all you a man is it you know what I mean you, I ain't tripping you you a man you you know what I mean is it, you done you, you do your thing um I think it's a little bit of both but more so you know like you know the less I know you know. That's best. If you're doing something you ain't got no business doing, hey, you grown, don't come telling me. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's actual, it's actual charges out there just for knowing information. So sometimes it's best to just not know nothing. Right, right. Um, so what, can, um, can you talk about what you went down for? Or, or is it, because I, I talk about mine a lot, but it's, it's mine a long way off. Do you, do you still speak on? Oh, you? yeah, I don't care. It okay. don't bother me. Um, what'd you get locked up for? I got locked up. Um, when I went down, I had six counts of armed robbery. Each one of them came with possession of a firearm during commission of a crime, um, hijacking. I think that's it, maybe. Armed robbery, hijacking, possession of a firearm. I think that was it. So <clears throat> I was going back and forth, forth with it for years. And four of them ended up getting dismissed. So I just, I went down for two of them. You actually did damn good. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think in the, in the overall scheme, you probably did, you did all right. Yeah, because cause it's funny, bro, because everybody else was getting 
10 is mandatory for armed robbery. But in 2013, they changed the law to where you don't got to do a mandatory 10, but whatever you get is mandatory. Ain't no parole out on it. Really? Yeah. See, I, ne I never uh, I never knew that. Dang. Yeah, that's Are you serious? Yeah. I'm going to tell you a funny story, right? I was in the cell one day in the county jail, and I was praying. And I was like, God, please don't let me go to prison for 10 years. I get out, change my life. Just don't let me do 10 years. This dude I got to fighting with like three days earlier, he walks to the cell, he got his shirt off. So I jump off the rack. I'm thinking he finna try something. And he was like, hey, man, I just wanted to tell you, uh, God put it on my heart to tell you, just chill out, don't worry. So I was like, man, you don't go head on somewhere, bro. I ain't know what he had going on, you know what I'm saying? And then I ended up getting one year less than what I asked not to get. So that was crazy. <laughs> so, 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 what you think about it? Was it, was it like, was it God with a sense of humor, or it had to be? So. <laughs> Wait, did you get the ten? You know yeah, I, mean? I didn't get, get the ten, ten, but I got the nine. Nine I almost feel like the ten. Oh yeah, 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 definitely feel like ten, man. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm familiar with that number. I did nine myself. Yeah. Um. So why why um why did you start robbing? Man, bro, to be honest, I didn't even have to, bro. It just was something that I was familiar with from when I was younger. And at that moment, bro, I was a certified nursing assistant. When you were robbing? Man, listen, I worked at a daycare. This was the second nursing home I worked at. I was trapping and robbing. I used to trap out the nursing home. I leave work and go rob somebody. So what it was, at the nursing home, I'm making like eight hundred dollars. I'm making like eight hundred dollars every two weeks. But I could go pull me a little move and make four, five, two racks, even fifteen hundred right now in two, three minutes. So it's like waiting on this eight hundred every two weeks. And I was in college for uh, I was doing physical therapy. I didn't even have to, bro. I was just being stupid. I had my own crib, my own car at 18, in college, working at a nursing home. Man, now I, <laughs> I don't think I knew that part. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. So you ain't never been no dummy. I, I thought it was like you pretty much turned your shit around. I thought you was like a, a dummy and turned your shit around. But you ain't never really been no. Nah, it, it was like up and down, right? I never been a dummy. I always knew better. But. It was just, you know, a certain point of life a hit, and I'd be like, man, you know what I'm saying? So, like, a good example, I left and went to Job Corps. I said I need to get away from, you know what I'm saying, anything toxic. I wanted to go start something different, start a different beginning. I made, you know, I, I told myself I'm going to go to Job Corps, do the right thing. I left home, went to Brunswick, Georgia. And two months after being there, I realized I ain't had no weed down there. Now, I know better. I know I came here to do better, but it's like, I can make some money because they ain't got no yeah. weed down no there. No weed? Where the kids at? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, it's stuff like that. Like, I'm not stupid. I know better. I know not to do this, but I just see an opportunity to make some more money. You know what I'm saying? So, that could, I guess you just file that up on the like bad decision, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, poor, it, just a risk. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've always been a risk taker, but now I'm, you know, it ain't nothing but the good type of risk. I ain't taking no crazy risk no more. So, man, that, that's the important part right there. Yeah. Um, well, so, um, so, so you end up getting in trouble or end up getting the time. Where you do your diagnostic at? Uh, Jackson. You went to Jackson? Yeah, Jackson, uh, diagnostic classification prison. I think that's in uh, Jackson, right? It's in Jackson, Jackson Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Georgia State Prison, but it's in Jackson, Georgia, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. I, I went to Jackson on my second one. On my second. How many times have you been to prison? That was the only time. You only been one time. Yeah. See, that's why I say I I I, I admire people who are smarter than me. Cause I've been twice, and, and <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, I, I've been twice, and damn near got. Fucked up again, but you know, I missed a bullet. But uh once I started having kids and and it just 
it sometimes for me it was just harder to say no. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I understand what you're saying, but you know, like I said, I like my baby brother, man, that son of a bitch ain't never been in trouble. I envy him. Yeah. Well, you know how far in life I'd have been? But I don't know if I'd have grinded this hard also. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, so let me see. When you went to Jackson, um, was you scared? Yeah, hell yeah. Really? Um Yeah, I ain't know what to expect. Cause you know, like I said, I be watching a lot of the videos. Let me, uh, let me see. Um, I talk about how. So first of all, I want to say, um, you know, uh, boy, listen, I, I I used to consider myself a bad motherfucker. I don't even know if I can make it now, because it yeah. wasn't it wasn't no weapons when when I was doing time. Believe it or not, wasn't no weapons, man. Really? We, like we we so I used to. <clears throat> Like I, I sometimes like um like if I if I if I do a video I'd be like uh Bill Feasy said this and I'd be like man it, you know we I, uh when when I was doing time and this is like I got out in ninety eight I got out in two thousand seven so it wasn't that long ago you know what yeah, I mean yeah. but the the people who had weapons were like considered scary or. Yeah. You might you might know this old man who don't fuck around. You know he going he might have a weapon or some somebody like we were we were just prided on our our fighting skills. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean, is it is it anything like that? Totally different now. One hundred percent different. They ain't even trying to fight. They ain't even trying to fight. No. Did you you heard about uh what happened Sunday? Smith State Prison. Yeah. I, I had a question about that. Matter of fact, we can go even I. Because I not well the question that I had you about the question that I had for you about that was because man don't you know I, I was in there watching Butler video and it cut off in the middle of the video. Um, oh, yeah. He did a real nice interview by, from somebody from Smith I think it's Smith but they were telling what happened and it cut off in the middle. But I was gonna ask you um what would because he was an inmate she was a kitchen worker All right what would make an inmate if he done that, I, I imagine he hate her, or uh, you know what I mean. She a kitchen worker. Mm -hmm. What would make an inmate go? What What would make his mind go that far to be like, you know what I mean? Like, what could she do so wrong to him to hate her? She want her to die. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> now, you know, I don't know the facts 100%, but in my personal opinion, from my experience of being in there, I believe um, the only thing that really make you feel that way is uh, one or two things. Either one, you're a very, very, very nasty person towards the inmate population, because sometimes, bro, there's certain staff members that'll make you hate them, that'll really make you look at them and be like, boy, if I had the opportunity to kill you, I would. I done thought it before. But I believe more so on the lines of, you know, it's a it's a large possibility that they probably had something going on together. And, you know, nigga might have got in his feelings, got his little heart broke or something. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's that sounds more so what probably why. Man, it's it's because I, 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 I totally agree. And what I was thinking was. So if he if he got a weapon, of course somebody brought it to him. Right. So unless somebody just bringing weapons willy nilly, it is a possibility that she probably brought him the weapon. If if they were dealing that close, you think? And again, we don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. Right. You don't know nothing. Right. But you think it's a possibility that she might have even supplied that weapon? Um, it's possible, but the way the um, you know, far as coming in. The way the metal detectors and all that stuff is, it's probably not, you know, probably ain't the way he got it. But there is a possibility, though. Because, I mean, if 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 that's not the case, then is it was it would be safe to say that there could be more weapons in there. And that's what makes it so scary, bro. I all think right. that was my biggest fear of doing time in prison, um, especially getting into it with people. Like iPhones coming straight through, like it ain't nothing. And you know, this stuff got metal on it. 
And I used to sit back and think, like, man, what if, you know, one of these guys I done got into it with, what if they get a gun in here one day and just run in my cell? I can't do nothing. Can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, praise to the most high that never happened, but I used to have them thoughts, bro, because, you know, people get all kind of stuff in there. I done seen a nigga with a laptop in there. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Are you serious? I done seen Country a dude man. with a laptop in there. Oh, man. In the cell. On Google, type doing whatever, and it's just like, damn, you could get all this. I, I'm telling you, I thought that for years. Man, I seen uh, cause I be, you know, just strolling, just strolling on the um, on the thing, and I saw the the, the one dude, he was doing one dance. They said he was doing some kind of knife dance. Boy had a blade, did long. He was just dancing in the cell. And I, matter of fact, and he pulled out a, a short one too. That mo, it was about like this. But he had, he literally had one like this with a white handle. He was just dancing. And I'm like, bro, well, that's why I said I'm, you know, it, it, it literally was not like that when I was doing time. I mean, I don't even, is it like, so, as soon as you go in, it's just deadly like that? Yeah, it's bad now, bro. Especially, see, it depends on, see, when you go to Jackson, they look at your charges. They look at how much time you got. They make you take all kind of tests to see where your mind at. And then they classify you, either minimum, medium, or close. So it really more so depends on where you go. Now, close security is the worst. Like, you might see somebody die first day at the prison. Medium used to not be that bad, but from what I've seen leaving, even the mediums is turning up. They bad, too. But, like, you get minimum security or something, you good. Like, it ain't going to be nothing going on because in the minimum, it's a lot of people that they got short time or they had a long time and now their time is short. Or they was at the bad prison for five, ten years and they got their security dropped. So now they chilling. They don't want no smoke. They just enjoying time. You know what I'm saying? But walking through the door, especially if you black, and I hate to say that, but it's true, the black people, in my opinion, is the most piece of shit people in the prison, bro. Damn, why you say that? If a white boy come through the door, they, the white boy is gonna run down there, hey, Billy, what's up, man? Let me help you with your property. Hispanic come through the door, the Hispanics running over there, speaking that Spanish, help him with his property, give him something to eat. Black people come through the door, man, black people mugging you. Nigga, where you from? Looking at you, you know what I'm saying? Ain't helping you with nothing. And they, they they about ready to challenge you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they about ready to see if they could rob you, if they could beat you up, put you on a dough, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just black people just, we are our own worst enemy, bro. So that's like, so so basically there's almost like, there's like no chance, if I mean, or a slim to none chance. So let me ask you, say like a, a young man just got some time. We're going to say, um... Do, do you, you know, everything we don't want, we'll edit out. But right. you speak about uh, your past affiliation? Uh, I ask certain stuff, yeah. Not like, not, not, and then heavy, and then right. heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so say like, uh, say like a guy come in and he been affiliated from the street, but he just got, we're going to say he just got two years, and uh, his main thing is to make it home. When he come in, is the best, what would be the best thing for him to do if someone asked him? Would it be to say he's nothing or say what he really is or um, something else or another option? Like, yeah, you don't, want to, <laughs> you don't want to say you nothing. Really? And then they find out and then it's like, why you lied? And nothing you say is going to make sense. You know what I'm saying? So in a situation like that, you a gang member. You got two years to do in prison. And and it depends on where you go, because if you go somewhere, minimum security, you know, everybody chilling. Ain't nobody on nothing. You go somewhere medium, you know, you just, it's a political thing. So you just better hope that you can just tell them, like, hey, bro, I got two years. I'm just trying to fall back and chill. Some people will respect it. Some people won't. And close security, it's the exact same way. Some people will respect it. Some people will be like, you know, I don't care nothing about that two years. You know what I'm saying? You're going to stand up when it's time or we're going to beat your ass, stab you up, whatever the case. So it's really dangerous, bro. I think being um, I think being gang affiliated in prison, in Georgia prison, 
is more dangerous than being a civilian. Damn, really? Yeah. Wow. That's a hell of a statement. I think it's more dangerous, bro. Because as a civilian, you know, I'm just not a target for anything. You know what I'm saying? As a gang member, you're a target. At any given moment, you're a target. Man, that's... Um, is, is Muslim a gang? In my personal opinion, yeah. They, You know, it's religious or whatever, but it's operated in the Georgia prison as gang. They'll, they'll get active too? Like they'll, they'll... they'll get active. They'll violate their own. They'll put them on the dole. You know, so it's just, you know, they got rules just like, you know. Yeah. Anything else got rules. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, man. Um... You ever what you you ever feared for your life while you was in there? Um. Yeah. Really? Can are are you able to share about that time? Yeah, I mean, let me think. Was it a specific time? It was more so just doing time every day, bro. Seeing how bad it get, you know, just seeing how I could be sitting here chopping it up with you today. And what time is it? It's three o six, and then at three thirty, they screaming lockdown. And I look out the range and you down there bleeding out the neck. And then they come back an hour later and be like, that boy died. Y'all need to write some statements. You know, so when it was stuff like that, whenever it would be a situation where I get into it with somebody or it'd be any type of tension, you know, I go to feeling that way. Like, damn, boy, you know, I hope I make it up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, any given moment, you know, something crazy could happen. Man, bro. When I, when I tell you, man, like when I be listening to your stories, I be sitting there, I be like, man, I be, I be, I be really captivated. And I be, again, I always got to ask myself, like, cause I, you know, I proudly say I made it through. I ain't never, uh, you ever been to PC? Nah, never been to PC. Would you, would you go? Um, I probably would go if, if I had a, you know, a great reasoning to go. Like if, okay, if I'm in a situation where I come into prison and I got a year to do and they send me to a crazy off the chain prison, I would probably go. I don't have pride issues. I don't care about who going to say that nigga scary. I'm not stupid. You know what I'm saying? I probably would. But in a situation where I go to prison and I got 10 years to do, nah, I'm not sitting down that long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I think it was with me. I was like, I, I just, uh, uh, well, it wasn't, again, uh, uh, man, shoot, I, I think our our thing was fighting, so it never really got, it never seemed life-threatening. I don't remember no deaths. Really? Bro, nine years, I don't remember. Sheesh. I can tell about, I can tell about ass whoopings and uh, niggas attack officers, officers whooping on inmates, personal dealings. A uh, mule suitcasing, everything, bro. <laughs> I never seen not not like a killing, not like not like uh two, like, not like a gang of niggas jumping on a nigga and he died, uh, not like a bro. That would be that would have been major for us. We probably would have been. Matter of fact, you, have you uh, have you heard about Boatwright? The um Boatwright was the guy in Alto. He got killed. Oh, uh, so. I don't think I heard of him. He's the reason Alto is women. You, 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 you look, like, look like you're shaking your head, but he's the reason Alto is women's prison now. You know what I mean? He was a. Uh, I was down there with him, but that's what I mean. When when Boatwright died, it had already been so much violence. But when he died, they took they made the prison women. It was like it's a big deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it be sound like in y'all story, in, in your story, it be like, damn, nigga died, locked down, come out tomorrow. Yeah, like nothing happened. When I was doing my, when I was on my last 60 days in prison, a dude died right in front of me. What, from, what happened to him? They had, um, they had Percocets in there for sale. And the dude was popping them, but they said it wasn't the real Percocets, it was fitting all, and he was taking them. And he was at the bottom of the steps. Me and my partner was on the top range, like I always say. I'm looking directly at him. And he down there, you know, acting all. And there's people laughing, recording him with their phone, throwing water on him. Everybody feel like he bullshitting around. And he fell right there on the steps. 
And they just walks off. You know, people thinking he playing or something for real. I asked my homeboy, I'm like, you see that? He like, man, that man always wigging out like that. He ain't nothing wrong with him. And then after about 20 minutes of lying there, his body, I'm looking at his skin turning blue. And then they went and got the police and he was dead. Another inmate picked him up, threw him over his shoulder, and the police let him walk him up to medical. So he was already gone? Yeah, he was dead already. When he, you start seeing that bluish, it's over with. It ain't nothing. So they have, not only is the, is the violence that, that much worse, but you also the drugs. They ain't have... They ain't have drugs like that when I was in there. It was like, it was weed. Man, any drug you can think of that you could find on the streets right now, you could find in the prison. Any drug. So you got, you got, you got doggone guns, drugs, stabbings. What's the, what the fuck is the difference from the street? I mean, you got the girls, you got the girls, right? Yeah, but see, it ain't. You know, everybody ain't, you know, the only ones who get the girls, for real, you got to you got to be playing with a little money. You got to get them a reason to mess with you, you know what I'm saying? And you might got, like, they so short of staff now, bro. <laughs> and that's another thing where violence come into play because you might got one feet, like, on the whole compound, I remember it being times where it's seven officers on the entire compound. On the entire Campus? It's 1,500, 2,000 inmates. I remember it being seven officers working the entire prison. Oh and, God. you know, let's just say I'm in A building. It's A building and B building on the same yard. You might got this one officer working A building, B building, and then C building on another yard. And then another officer working D, E, F building. So, you know, if she leave A building to go do her rounds in B building, then something pop off in here. It takes her 10 minutes over there. Then she got to take another five minute walk. We had 15 minutes. Now she got to do her rounds down there. We had 25 minutes. It's going to take about five minutes to come back up here. That could be 30 minutes of you sitting bleeding. But that's just light. That's slight. I remember like six, seven hours before at Ware State Prison, me not even seeing an officer nowhere like literally hours went by you don't even see an officer so basically the prison sound like a death trap it is bro that is that's why i tell them young guys in every single video i make you know what i'm saying i make it my business to not leave that out that that's not where you want to be you know what i'm saying um so like like, like we were talking about the young lady at Smith State Prison. If, if say like uh, somebody you care about, young lady came and told you, Man, I just got a job at the prison. And then she said a prison that you know, like she say uh, Ware or, or, or uh, Hayes. What, what would you tell her? Um, that's actually happened to me before. Really? Girls and guys. And I tell them, you know, in my personal opinion, I would suggest that you do another route. But at the end of the day, you've grown. And if that's the choice you make, then I would just give them advice on, you know, just be a fair person, treat people right. You know, don't ever let that badge get to your head because you got some people here that's never, ever gone. They know they're going to die here. So if you make me mad enough, I might just take your life. You know what I'm saying? But I would recommend you don't, you know, even for professions where they say you got to have a year of, you know, like that type of experience, man, you could go to a juvenile. You could go to a county jail or something. You ain't got to go in no damn prison. You know what I'm saying? You could be like a probation officer. Or... Yeah, but like even to be a probation officer, you got to have 12 months experience right. working as an yeah. officer. Right. But like family members, I wouldn't go for it. Even the grown ones, I ain't going for it. Really? Yeah, I, w I would do something purposely to make them not work there. Dang, man. My mama just said that. You know that? She just said she finna go be a CO at a prison. I told her, no, you not. You not finna be no CO. She thinks she gonna be a CO. I'm flattening her tires. <laughs> she ain't gonna to work. I'm gonna go hide her uniform. She's not gone. Oh, man. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I'm gonna be honest. I couldn't imagine because... That's not gonna happen. I don't care what she talking about. It's not gonna happen. She ain't going. <laughs> yeah, and, and we didn't get into the nasty aspect of it, man. It was some 
some disgusting shit down there. You know, when it comes to the, uh, the which they used to call them B lemons. Yeah, they still call it that. You know what I mean? I see. I see. Oh, I know it changed, but when I was, I don't think it was like no. Um, you didn't have to register or nothing like that. When when you caught that, it was like a a dr. You go to the hole for two weeks, and then life goes on. Yeah. Now, uh, you know they making you. Matter of fact, I got in trouble. I got in trouble like that one time. Um, caught one B left, man. I was. 17 years old. They left me up on the block by that by 21 days. For real. Boy, I ain't never had to worry about that again. Yeah. It now it, it just depends on where you at. Because I've seen people do it. And um, the girl just come cuss you out. And you stop and don't nothing happen. Then I've seen people do it where they write you up. You get on store restriction. And then like places like Smith, you go into the hole for 30 days. Every time. But... Then at one point they were like taking you to outside court, then make you register as an offender. I heard that, but I don't think I personally know nobody that that actually happened to. Okay, I heard so if you catch three B elevens, they put an extra charge on you, but I don't personally know nobody where that happened. You are a father, right? Yeah. Um, how many kids you got? One. Son. Yeah. How old is he? Just turned 11 on Father's Day. Really? Yep. Um, you talk to him? Nope. Not on Father's Day? Really? Going through some court court issues. We going to court about him, so. You, you got to go to court about your son? Yep. Uh, what, what's the issue? To be honest, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just his, you know, his people that he with, they don't want me around him for whatever reason, so. Really? Yeah. Man, that's um that that bro, that crazy. I ain't I ain't hear from my daughters gave me that on Father's Day, but I ain't hear from my son on Father's Day. And uh you know, I I be wanna let my son know it hurt. Well, your son eleven, my son, he about to be sixteen, so it's a little different. Yeah. Um, but I know that I know where the influence still come from. Right, right. But bro, I ain't never not I was there when he was born. I ain't never yeah, all, all that's him. All them in the pictures and shit. Yeah. But I ain't never not been there. And now he feel like he got a daddy that, you know, uh, he, or he ain't got no or his daddy and shit. He, I know he tell his his kids that. So, um, what's my question? Um, how how that make you feel, man? Cause I I know I know I, you don't come off as a person that don't give a damn or irresponsible. So, as a matter of fact, okay, so let me rephrase. I, I don't, I don't, she tried to make me go to court, but I ain't got money like that, so I ain't going. Um, you are going to court. You are going to go to court? Yeah. So, how they make you feel, man? You got to go to court by a situation that you know, like, you got to fight for, like, like you, I mean, you, you shouldn't have to fight for your son. Right, your kid, Absolutely. your child. You want to be there? Yeah, for sure. So, is is this an evil bitch? Definitely an evil bitch. <laughs> um, how it makes me feel, bro. I mean, it makes me feel terrible, bro. And I'm gonna tell you why. I know so many dead beats in this world, and even the ones I don't know, you can just see. I know there are so many men in this world, bro that don't give two shits about their kids, that don't care that they exist. It's some niggas living in the same city right down the street as their kids and don't care nothing about them. So when I'm the exact opposite, where I love my son to death and I want to be involved with any and everything, but I can't, and I don't even know the reason why, you know, that shit make me feel terrible, bro, but... You know, I'm I'm a new person. I'm living a different life now, you know. And uh so I'm just going about it the legal route, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I would imagine there would have to be some some form of resentment. You know what I mean? She she gotta resent you for something, it, whether he was um, you know, maybe sometime I've been resented for going to prison. Yeah, well, you know, I had an option in the beginning, bro. I really didn't have to go to prison. I was uh I was offered a 10 years on probation, go home today type of thing. 
but I had to make statements against two people and, um, you know, come to court if those two people decided to go to trial. It's either that or you're taking the charges. And I took the latter option. You know what I'm saying? Because, you, yeah, you know, dang. back in that moment, you know, I've always looked at crime and telling like this. If me and you did something, and I know for a fact me and you did this, I get caught, you don't. Bruh, I'm taking the hit. However it come, I'm going to try my best to get it as low as possible, but there is no point in me bringing you into it. I know I did this. This is my consequence. I just got to deal with it. Now, if you did something and I got caught up for it, I had no knowledge of it. I had no dealings with it. Oh, shit. Boy, hey, you better come straighten this out before I straighten it out. And I ain't going to worry about who called me a snitch because, nigga, I didn't do it. And I ain't know nothing about it. That ain't my charge. That's your charge. You know what I'm saying? So I know I, you know, I had something to do with all that shit. So I'm, I'm like, man, I'm not doing that. You know, and she felt like, you know, I'm pregnant. She was pregnant when I got locked up. You know, she felt like I'm pregnant. This is my first child. This is your first child. Tell on them niggas and come home. Nah, there it go. Feel me? But it's there just it like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, it's crazy because... Man, like, just like you saying, it's, you know, she can't live your life, so she don't know what you got to contend with as a man telling on people, snitching on people, or these are people you deal with, yeah. you know what I mean? All she know is, from a woman's side, I got this baby, we're going to have these bills, I'm going to need you, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm going to need you, so so that that do sound like what a, what a resentment might might come from man you ain't even got to go there if i figured that motherfucker out you know what i'm saying <laughs> but i mean even i don't know bro I, I understand all that but after all them years bro you feel me you've been better. living your life you done went and had hella other kids you doing you man let me see my fucking son you want child support uh, not yet i'm i'm gonna be though my lawyer yes. already told me i'm gonna be you single yeah if you fuck around and get somebody you serious about and act like, you know, you love her, y'all might start a life together. And you know, I don't, you know, I don't know that that's how it happened for me anyway. When I was single, no child support, no, the, the kid situation was good. Yeah. Man, I fuck around and got married. Now I got two daughters and now I'm just the worst father. I just, I, I abandoned my whole first family. You know what I mean? So I can't. My son got a whole room up there. Him, he don't need. He ain't been there more about two years. For real? Yeah. Nah. So I mean, it's all. And but like I said, and the crazy, um, I mentioned that because like I said, it, it starts with him. I mean, it starts with her. It starts with the feuding with the mama. But now he's sixteen. So now he don't call me and Happy Father's Day, Dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like, bro, this ain't even your fight. You know what I mean? Just. You what? know, sometimes, bro, them influences, it, it, it comes from over the years of hearing one side of things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I thought I was talking to my brother the other day about it. You know, thankfully, I'm the type of person that you can't just tell me, like, like you can't tell me nothing bad about my, my mama can't tell me nothing bad about my pops because I'm not looking at him in that light. You know what I'm saying? So anything my mama tell me about my pop, it going in one ear and out the other. Because, you know, how he did with me and how he did with you is two total different dealings. But nowadays, the way things is, bro, it don't work like that. It just work like mama put fuck shit in kid ear all these years. Kid get old enough to kick it on his own. And he just like, man, fuck that nigga. But really, why is you saying fuck me? Because my mama said, you nigga, you don't even know what happened. You know and, what I'm saying? Bro, and that's what I meant when I said, bro, this ain't even your fight. You, you don't even... Like he told me one day, you don't do nothing for me. Bro, you have no idea. You have no idea. Exactly. And the thing about it is, like I said, um, and this is bad, I, I share this on my YouTube, but again, I got like my daughters now are 13 months and six years old. So th them good kids, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, he's 16. I don't even know if I could, if, if they said, hey, let him come with you for a year or for a summer, I don't know if I want to bring no unstable child and turn my shit upside down 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, or or you be scared to go to sleep because this nigga really don't like me. You know what I mean? You know, you know what's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> he he my son, but he really don't. He acting like he like me, but he don't like. I'm scared to go to sleep yeah. in my house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's kind of what I'm going through. I hope, man, if if you can, you know, I, I, I the best thing I would say is your understanding with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can get that and maintain that, I'm I'm down there feeling like a failure with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I don't think these women understand the importance of a man, bro. Like in the child's life, you know, you know. And and, and this is factual. This is factual. You can look it up. You know. Men, little boys that are raised by women without their father in their lives are higher risk of being criminals, convicted felons, uh, people that just abuse people, niggas just want to fight all day and hurt people, um, high school dropouts, just, just the scum of the earth. The ones that's raised by single women their risk is way, way higher than man and woman together raising them. Woman think they can, oh, I don't need no man. You can't raise no fucking man. You can't do it. You can try it. You can say whatever you want to say. Your mama raised you. You can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I, kn I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a fact. See, and, and man, and that's what I'm, the crazy thing is, well, I don't know. I can't say that because I ain't been around in years, but I wish someone would tell my son mom that shit you know what i mean because i don't know you know it, it's kind of like even with your situation it's like bro you might not like me even if you don't like who i done became that ain't got nothing to do with him that ain't got nothing to do with him they don't care about that though i told my son mama the same thing i told you and i actually screenshotted something from this um site i was looking up where the uh like showing all the statistics and the um the percentages and all that screenshotted it to her and sent it to her. Oh yeah, mental health also too. That's something I left out. Damn, they come up mental health. Yeah, just from not having a phone. It's a high, way, way higher percentage. Yeah, and um, Damn. and uh, she texted me back and said some goofy shit like I don't care about it. whatever she said, but it was something stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I remember. I remember. I can remember when my son was like, I think five. And I went to get him one time, or she brought him to me, and um, he was sitting on the sofa, man, getting ready to do something. He was sitting on the sofa, and he had his legs crossed. Um, and don't get me wrong, I, I think that's one of the most masculine things a man can do. But as a man, when you when you know you a man, you know he was like uh, six, seven. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, so when I you know, I came in the living room, I'm like. Bro, why you sitting like that? And he, he like, like what? I'm like, you ever seen me sit like that? So he, he undid his legs. He like, no. I'm like, don't sit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and that, but that was just, just all the time with your mama, just yeah. watching your mama, and nobody there to say, hey, hey, hell no, don't do that. You know what I mean? We ain't gonna, yeah. we just ain't, ain't nothing wrong with. It. We just ain't gonna do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's a fact. What'd you say? I said that's a fact, bro. That's a fact. If you you know you grow up watching your mama, you know do all kind of stuff, man. You might start portraying them traits, and in your mind, shit, I see mama doing it. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You don't see no man standing up pissing. You see mama sit down all the time and piss. You know what I'm saying? So them kids, them, especially them boys, bro. They need their daddy in their life. Yeah. Man, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm do something. Yeah, that that that's a fight in itself. I got uh, yeah. That's I was finna say something like I'm gonna do something, some kind of community work or something like that. But yeah, right now we on that. I hate my dad. Shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, what would you do if you find out your your son had them winning join the game? What'd you do? Um, at this age, well, we gonna say like we gonna say older. Like like a little older, six, seventeen. A little older. Uh, I mean, at that point, only thing I would be able to do is talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I just try my best to uh, persuade him. You know, persuade that, him against it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and um, you know, probably try to just see, try to talk him out of it, basically. 
You you regret your affiliation? Um, I don't think I regret it because uh, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of stuff I learned through it. You know what I'm saying? Um, with without it, I probably would not have learned and matured to the way I am now. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of good principles within it. But yeah, really? Yeah. Dang, I you know I don't, see you don't never hear you don't never hear people talk about that side, the, you know the the decent side. And I mean not not for no, I'm not encouraging it at all. <laughs> I'm not doing that, not even a little bit, because yeah. I think all gangs right now in 2024, June 19, 2024, I think it's all watered down. I think it's all some bullshit. I think none of it is 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 what it was originally created for. I don't think nobody really living by loyalty and you know, I think it's all now who got the money, you know, who popular, who block we can go spin. If they play with us, I know I got some backup. You know what I'm saying? It's so dangerous in the prison. You would have one of your quote unquote brothers, you might go to him and try to get something to eat. He might got a box full of food, won't give you a pack of noodles. And there's one of your brothers. He might not give you nothing to eat. But if somebody else come and, you know, try to attack him, mm -hmm. he 100% expect you to... to yeah. Go on ahead of so, <laughs> so the thing, the thing to it is, they'll tell you in the prison, like, if I'm like, man, that shit lame. Thank you, bro. I'm like, man, that shit lame. And they like, what? I'm like, man, I'm hungry, man. Bro wouldn't even give me nothing to eat. Dad say some shit like, what, well, nigga ain't got to feed you? You your own man. But as soon as one of them come stab you and I don't do nothing, y'all going to come be ready to kill me. Why you ain't ride for your brother? The fuck, I couldn't get a honey bun or a pack of noodles for my brother the other night. You know what I'm saying? So now, bro, I feel like the gang shit is just... We just making sure we got some backup when shit get hot. When the fire get turned on, I got somebody to come help me. But far as we really standing up against oppression, we really helping our community. Man, that shit not happening no more, man. It's just not happening no more. Sound like it's just a reason for violence. Just just a reason to to be violent. Nope. It just ain't happening no more like that, bro. Damn it, man. Sometimes I be thinking either I was too young and dumb to know how dangerous sit maybe maybe because I don't think it was that dangerous when I was there. So it's possible that I just was goddamn too stupid to know. You know what I mean? Or 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 something because man, I'm man, I'm I'm terrified, right? If them folk try to get me, they couldn't drag me to prison. I done been twice. But if man, they couldn't drag me to prison right now. Yeah, I think it's just the times change, bro, because, you know, when I was in there hearing from people that had been in there 10, 20 years before I came, you know, they telling me, like, man, this shit wasn't like that. Like, the older folks is saying the new generation scary, because they like, man, they ain't got knives and shit. They scary as hell. Why you don't want to go fight? But now it's like, bro, that's not happening. I saw, I saw a dude arguing with another dude once. One dude was in the gang. One dude was a civilian. The civilian was turned up. He like, hit, you know, let's fight. So the, the other, the gang member, he go walking down to the room like they finna go in the room. So the civilian dude snatch his shirt off. Like six, seven other, other gang members run up. They like, nah, bro, I ain't shooting no ones with nobody. You got a problem with bro. You got a problem with all of us. So he go to chomping them off like, man, y'all niggas some hoes, man. Y'all niggas won't shoot a one-on-one. -on -one? Niggas pull out knives, stab them up. Stab them all in the head, the face, everything. Like now, when you got an issue, they are stabbing you. They hitting your ass with a lock. They might got some bleach. That was one of my specialties. You know what I'm saying? And shit, that's just what they do. With the bleach? You throw the bleach on somebody? Hell yeah. I used to take a, um, every dorm I ever went into, you got to holler at the laundromat because they got access to the bleach. And I buy a bottle, like a little... 20 ounce soda bottle of bleach and I'll take a knife and stab a hole in the top of it and I'll just keep it by my bed or if, if there's some tension out there I'll walk around with it in my hand 
And you know, if I ever get attacked by more than I can handle, I'm going to just squeeze the bleach, hit you in the eye. And when the bleach hits you in the eye, it's going to burn your eyes. It's going to feel like somebody got a lighter against your eye. Damn, bro. I never knew that. Yeah. I'm talking about, I, bro, like, uh, even even they had they had the, they ain't have no name for it, but even the guys in the block, they, they, they were just nasty ass niggas when they would make the, they would take like magic shades, some shit, some piss. Uh, some some fucking fermented fruit, some shit been sitting up three, four days, all that kind of shit. You know, if they want to get at an officer or get at somebody, they would do it. But then if somebody doing that, they'd be like, that nasty ass nigga or that, you know what I mean? You know, he, he ain't going to do it. You know, he, he know he ain't going to throw that shit on everybody. But yeah. you know what I mean? It, it was just like that. It wasn't no normal thing. It was like running down and cell tripping. You know what I mean? It, but now it sound it sound normal, bro. That shit got me so terrified. Oh yeah, Just, it's normal. Yeah, they used to call it shit you down. It's normal. Throwing shit, shit you down. Throwing shit on officers, that's very normal now. See that, you got dudes you can pay now. They known for doing it. To an officer? To an officer. You can pull up on a dude right now and say, Hey, I got a twenty five dollars. I'm about to cash up you right now. When Miss Such and Such come back, shit her down. Like, all right, I got you. And when she come, you? he's gonna do it. What's the penalty for fucking with an officer? See, if you got somebody who mental health level three, they just gonna go to the whole <laughs> poor man and come back out. Bro, look, I uh, I said that shit one day. You know, just this gonna take a lot of editing because of the terminology. I said that shit to my wife one day. I was like, uh, something happened. I was like, oh yeah, he mental health. But she bust out laughing. Some reason my mouth dry. She uh, she bust out laughing. She like, she said he is mental health or. I'm like, no, nah, I'm like, no, nah, he, nah, he mental health. But just like the way that I, the way that we classify or term stuff. Yeah, but she was like, damn, just like the way you said that, you like, you got somebody who, 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 <laughs> who mental health level three. That what you said? Yeah. I ain't never even heard of that. Cause I think the levels go all the way, the levels go all the way up to five. But see, at a normal prison that take um, mental health, they may have, the on, the highest it'll go is level three, because that's you know they kind of normal but they fucked up still. But level four and level five they got their own section. They ain't nowhere near around regular people. But men that have level three, you know, man, they can stab somebody and go to the hole and get out the same day. Cause they say they can't have them locked down for too long, depending on what their mental health issue is. So sometimes people play on the mental health. They will pay them, do they hits, pay them, throw shit on the officer. They not gonna get in nowhere near as much trouble as I would. Damn, boy. Yeah, man, it's a whole new uh. I, look, I, I like I tell y'all, um, you know, like Bill say, man, stay out of trouble, stay out of the way. How you meet that boy Butler? Um, Butler, how did I meet Butler? Was it Instagram? I thought he sent me something on Instagram one day. I think it might have been in my message request for a while. And I just uh I just was scrolling one night, bored, and I just so happened to click on the message. And um he was just telling me what he you you know, what he do in the community and the type of work he do. And, you know, he told me his background about the time he did and stuff like that. And, you know, I was with it. I'm all for stuff like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I hit him up. And, uh, you know, he he really handling business out here, trying to really help me. What over there doing? He over that bullshit? Huh? What butt over there doing? Man, he be handling that business, man. He be, really? uh, yeah, he had got me, uh, he had got me booked in the, um, the Cad County YDC to come in there and do some talking. Are you serious? And in the class at the DeKalb County Courthouse, but. I think the day before I was about to go, it uh something happened in the jail and they canceled it. They they canceled all the uh people that was supposed to come. But he plugged me with some some powerful people in the city, man. Man, see that's excellent. Um I'm actually trying to get on that. That's that's the road I'm trying to get on myself. Yeah. So you so you you with the community service, the community work. Yeah, I'm 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 just now, you know, getting into 
being more hands on. Cause that's what I want to do for a long time. And honestly, I'm I'm gonna tell you, I was talking to uh Charleston White. And um he said something, bruh, and it made me think about it later on that night. He he told me he was like, uh, you know, as long as you talking to niggas, teenagers, early adults, whatever, and they got a situation here. And then, you know, when you get in your car and drive off and they go back to wherever they went to, he said, nigga, even if you fed them, nigga, their situation is finna still be the same way. You know, that inspiration is going to wear off after so long. So now to put my own opinion on it, I do believe there is some truth to that. And I do believe some people take what you say. And they can, you know, hear your experience and they can do a whole 180. You know what I'm saying? So it's not true for all, but it did kind of make me think like, okay, I think I need to be more hands on. You know what I'm saying? Is that what he was trying to say? Like when he say that some guys got to go back to their situation? Is, is that what he's trying to say? Like uh, we got to do more than talk to him? Cause... That's how I took it. I took it as if he was telling me that, you know, because like, for example, let's just say I'm 16. I sell weed, I rob people. You 40, you trying to tell me, hey, stop doing that. You could end up in jail, woo do woo do woo And you just inspired me to do the right thing, go find a job. And then, you know, let's just say, for instance, I leave here, I go apply for three jobs, and then I go back home and it ain't no food in the refrigerator. And I'm still sleeping on the floor. The lights got cut off. I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing. What you just told me really ain't changing it. You got to give me a, uh, you got to come with some type of resource. You know what I'm saying? So I linked up with this lady. She's doing something like a, uh, something kind of like a, um, like a temp service almost. She just got a lot of resources, man. I went live with her once and she was like, she got like nine or 10 slots available. Anybody from 16 to 24, I think in the Atlanta and surrounding areas. If you need a job and we had a link for them to apply for, you know what I'm saying? Really? And I, yeah. Yeah. And I believe uh, all the slots got filled up. So stuff like that, bro, I live for stuff like that. If I can help you some type of way, get a job, point you in the right direction or get a GED, you know, anything that'll be a life changing that ain't just going to be for right now. It'll be, you know, I'm for all that, all that type stuff. Man, that, that, uh, for sure. Hopefully, I like I said, I, I want to get in that too, man. I, I really want to, because just like what you said, if it's, I feel like even if it's if it's one person, if I can change, help change a mind, if I can change their mind, if something that I say can be like, oh hell no, uh, you know what I mean? Just just anything, just anything for any person, one person, that'll be enough for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. One, bro, that's all. That's all it is. That's why when I was telling you, like, what he told me, you know, like I say, to an extent, it's, it's true. But at the same time, man, I got plenty of people that hit me up and be like, bro, I, I had a nigga tell me one time I just flush my weed down the toilet and, and I'm doing it the right way. After I hear your stories, I don't even want to take the chance no more. So I know. You know, it reached people for sure. You know what I'm saying? Why listen? I don't know how I got on your channel. I was listening to it and I was like, what the fuck? I bruh, I, I um I think one of the first stories I heard probably been uh, it wasn't evil, it wasn't evil folk. It was somebody else. It was somebody else. But that goddamn evil folk, man. <laughs> bro, I'm talking about bro, listen. I and see, I'm a storyteller myself, so yeah. I'm telling you, cause let me tell you how you know when you're good. This is how you know when you're good. And and this what one of my subscribers did. I don't, I don't even think I'm that good, but he. Uh, I dropped one, and he was like, he was like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna say them motherfuckers work tomorrow. You know what I mean? When they say that, listen, when they it. started taking, when they, well, you probably, they probably been doing that with Joseph, because you know, but see, I'm new. Yeah. Well, bro, like when you drop, like the uh, other day when you dropped yours, I click on the the, the video, see how long it's gonna be. Oh, they been 40 minutes? <laughs> I would I would say them for the bar. If people gotta do long drives to work, yeah. if they gotta be somewhere fucking around for man, that bro, you can sit there and listen to that story, man. And then they just want more. They want it don't matter. You can you can hit them with a banger. 
They be like, bro, you got another one? Yeah, that's how it be. You got another one? You, you, you ain't whoop no more? You got to, you got to, you know, when they come to that and you know, this is my advice because you newer to it, you got to control that. You got to be the manager over that. Don't let them press you to burn yourself out. You know what I'm saying? You got to, because, bro, I know that feeling. You just drop some heat. And then the very next day, come on, man, drop another one. I'm like, damn, bro, nigga, I just took hella hours doing that, hella hours no. editing, you know what I'm saying? Why? But they don't see that part, so you just got to make sure you control that. So now I set myself on a Saturday and Sunday, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not recording nothing. I'm not editing nothing. I'm relaxing. Whatever, whatever it is I want to do, Saturday and Sunday, I'm chilling. I don't care who say what. And you know, Monday through Friday, I'm grinding. I'm, I'm in meetings, I'm recording, I'm editing, I'm posting. But the weekends, it's just a peace of mind thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. So, so I, I appreciate that too. Yeah. Because um, I, I did find myself getting like that too. You'd be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta be in control of that balance, bro. Because it, it's your, your peace. You know what I'm saying? You. What inspired you to start telling the stories? Did did you think it'll be like this, or did you was you just fucking around? Um, bro, I was in prison, and I uh, this girl I was talking to, she was uh, she used to stay going into, it was almost like a competitive thing. She used to stay telling me about, yeah, these boys in Alabama be live, people be on there sending no money, yeah, them boys in Alabama. I'm like, bitch, you keep watching these boys in Alabama, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, well, shit, you might as well start a TikTok. I'm like, man, I'm not finna do all that. That's doing too much. That's how you get your phone knocked off and stuff. And then next thing you know, these boys in Alabama. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna make me with a TikTok one of these days. You gonna watch this boy in Georgia. You talking about these boys in Alabama. And uh, man, I went to the kitchen one day. Uh, it was like two, three brand new kitchen stewardess in there. I don't know what I had going on. This gonna sound like some real fat shit, but... I had a, a sweet tooth, bro. I wanted some strawberry cake so bad. They ain't had, they ain't serving none. Yeah. So when I see all these new stewardess, you know, all the inmates, I know them. They ain't going to say none. I finessed my way in the kitchen. I done tricked the stewardess like I work in there. I went in the kitchen, and, bro, I went and baked some strawberry cake. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I baked it. I put it on a tray, I cut it into four big ass slices like that big, and then I finessed the kitchen steward, I, I act like I was like spazzing out about something, I'm like, man, I quit, let me out. She like, what's your name? Man, I just gave her any name. I'm like, I quit, let me out. And she let me out, and I went back to the dorm, I went on TikTok, I told what I just did, I showed them the cake. And then I went to showing them the milks that I stole out the kitchen. I stole two little cartons of milk. And I'm on TikTok, bro, eating the cake and drinking the milk. Yeah. And somehow the cert team, um, the cert team came straight to my door. They knocked my phone off and they uh they took me to the hole. And I'm like, what the hell I'm going to the hole for? They like that stunt you just put in the kitchen. They didn't even know nothing about the TikTok. But I got my phone knocked off. I went to the hole for 31 days. That was my first video ever. When I got out the hole, it probably took me like another month to be able to buy another phone. I got a phone, and bro, I had like 20,000 followers on TikTok. That video had went for viral. One video. It went viral. So I just kept making TikToks after that. And bro, my phone kept getting knocked off. And every time it get knocked off, I'd get another one. And then she, before you know it, bro, I was at like 100,000 followers on TikTok. So when I got out, the people on TikTok, because I used to tell stories for like 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. And then they was like, bro, go on YouTube and tell your stories longer. So I had no idea what I was doing, bro. I just, once they kept commenting that for about a week straight, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a shot. And I was in the dining room. I bought up a T-shirt as a stand, put my phone on it. And I just told a story one day. I told a story about a uh, dude got stabbed up about a TV that was arguing about who finna watch what program. And um, 
I was working at two warehouses. I had no idea what was going on. I quit one of the jobs. I went and got two more jobs. Ended up quitting them slowly but surely, every single one of them. And I was sitting in the car one day. I was sitting in my mama's truck. She was at a doctor's appointment. And I was just praying, bro. I was just like, God, what do you got for me, man? Because I done did nine years of my life in prison. I'm out here. I hate these jobs. Like, you know, the money TikTok was paying me, bro. That wasn't enough to do nothing. It was like 300 a month. In prison, that was cool. But in the real world, that ain't nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, wow. I'm sitting there like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I get an email from YouTube. And it says something, congratulations. I'm like, man, what the hell is this? So I clicked into it. And it said, congratulations. You are now a partner. You're a member of the partner program. So I'm like, the partner program? And I started scrolling through my email, and I'm seeing hella different, um, hella different, um, like, this person commented, this person liked, this person followed. But I'm still not understanding for real, you know what I'm saying? So it tells me, enter my bank information, I enter it, it says it's going to send me a, a something in the mail that I got to verify, so I did that, and then, um... So now at this point, it kind of geeked me up a little bit. So every day after that, I just kept going back telling stories. But I'm still not even knowing the subscriber thing or nothing. And then I was watching a video from some YouTuber, and they said, you got to download YouTube Studio. So I downloaded it, and that's when I saw the subscribers. And, bruh, it was going so fast. Like, when I looked at it, it was at, like, 2,000. I swiped down on my phone, 2,300. I swiped down again, 2,900. I swiped down again, 4,000. I was like, man, what the, the hell going on? The subscribers was going just like that. So then, you know, that's when they were showing me about the money, and then they told me today I'm going to get the money. Man, I thought that shit was a prank. I showed it to my grandma. Grandma was at the house when I showed it to her. And she said, why would they give you that money just because you told some stories about jail? I was like, I don't know. She was like, I don't know. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably ain't Both true. Both times it is, yeah. So I was showing my mama. She was like, mm, all right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I had my little brother with me. I took him to the dentist, man. And, and you know, driving from, let's say, Decatur to Austell, Georgia. Well, that was about, about an hour, mm -hmm. you know. And I had like $13 to my name. I had to put $10 worth of gas in the truck. I had a couple dollars left. I took him to Taco Bell. And this is the day I'm supposed to get the money. We went to Taco Bell first. I told him, you got to get cheapest stuff because we got to make it back. And I gave, uh, I bought him like, whatever at Taco Bell that cost like a dollar. I bought him like two of them. And then uh, I went to the gas station, pulled up at the pump. And I went in the store, but before I told them give me 10 on the pump, I went into my bank account just to make sure I got full $10 left from the Taco Bell. And when I went in there, that shit was $3,100. And it said YouTube payment. And I was like, oh, yeah, this shit's serious. It was really So I put about 40 in the tank, took little bro back to Taco Bell. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, yeah. I ain't going to lie. I couldn't even imagine the feeling, boy. Yeah. Man, I, I just couldn't even imagine the feeling. Yeah, it was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, you don't did good, man. You don't did damn good, it, man. You are definitely an inspiration. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, appreciate what would you tell anyone who who was thinking about starting a, a YouTube, or uh, if they wanted if they wanted some some digital real estate, um, do something on on the online. No, anybody wanting to do it, bro. You got to, I think the most important thing, a lot of people see people do it and then they just jump out there and try to do it and, and they don't even got an idea of what they finna do. See, what you got to do, bro, you got to have a niche. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a topic that you're very good at, something that you know a whole lot about, something that you got a lot of experience with. Don't worry about me talking about prison stories if you don't know nothing about prison you ain't got no stories you don't need to be trying to do that you know what i'm saying find what it is that you're really good at and get on there bro and just give it your all and don't even sit around too tough thinking about the money because some people platform grow faster than others you know what i'm saying 
And just be consistent, bro. Be very consistent. Like I say, give it your all. Do your best. And let it grow, bro. For us, so. Let it grow. Man, I appreciate it, Bill. For I sure. appreciate you coming through, man. Um, I don't know how to close out, man. Yeah. That's it, nigga. That's it. Yeah, like, I, sure. man, I appreciate it, man. God and damn, and then bro. let me throw this in there, bro. For anybody that feel like, like, whatever you feel like your niche is, your niche like, if you think it's stupid or, man, ain't nobody going to want to see it. You got to remember, bro, it's 8 billion people in the world. So it's a lot of people that think the same exact way you think. It's a lot of people that think the same way. You know what I'm saying? If that's your audience, shit, if you can make free bands off that. You just feel do me? it. Yeah, just do it, bro. Just do it and don't let up. Don't let nobody tell you different. Don't get distracted by comments because they're going to be goofy. It's going to be goofballs that's going to say stupidest stuff in the world. I still see it to this day. Yeah. I've been on it, you know, close to two years now, and I still see goofy comments. I just ignore it. I act like I ain't never saw it before. Anybody go to trying to diss you or whatever, ignore it. Act like you don't even see it. That's going to put the flame out, you know, way quicker than it would if, by you feeding into it. Okay, so so don't respond no bullshit. Don't, don't I respond would. to it. I would. I, it's okay. so much bullshit. You go to YouTube right now, type in <laughs> Bill Feezy exposed or Bill Feezy anything. It's going to be so much fuck shit pop up about me. I ain't entertained. Damn, not. really? Yeah. Damn. I ain't entertained none of it. Okay. That's good advice, man, because I, I, you know, I'll I, I be Mr. Clap back. Yeah, you yeah, say man. something I want to got. I mean, you know everybody different. That's just, it works for me. And that's just my personal advice to anybody. You feel me? I, I wouldn't. Think that's the way to go. I wouldn't feed into that stupid shit, bro. Um, what what can they find yet, man? I'm gonna tell y'all. If y'all like my story, man, bro, listen. This this <laughs> the reason why I started, man. If y'all if y'all like my stories, you know what I mean. I know for a fact, bro. My folk gonna love you. Tell them where they can find yet. Uh, Bill Feezy YouTube, Bill Feezy Nine Instagram, and uh, that's it. That's all I got right now. I ain't got nothing else. Goddamn boy, Bill! <laughs> <laughs>